Praise the Lord, St. Stephen. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Would all those that are able, please stand with me for invocation. Let's read together, please. Father, please help us to love God, love family, and love neighbor. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We come, Father, to say thank you for blessing us to see yet another day. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to lead us and guide us the way that you would have us go. And we realize, Father, that if we go the way that we want to go, that we will lead ourselves into destruction. And, Lord God, we pray for each and every one that you're and we ask your continued blessing upon them. And if there are some, Father, that are sick and shut in, there are some that are in nursing homes, there are some that are home on their beds of affliction. We pray, Father, that you would uh, touch and heal those that you will. And that, Lord God, that you would lead us into all that is right and right. Sometimes, Father, we say things that we shouldn't say, so we should keep and watch our word. Help us, Lord God, to say those things that we have learned of you, those things that are right and righteous, those things that will lead to everlasting life. We thank you, Lord God, that you saw that we were drifting so far away from you that we would never be able to return. And you had so much love in your heart for us, Lord God, that you sent your only begotten Son down on this earth to live among us and to teach us how to live a godly life. Then, Father, there was something else you wanted him to do. Something that no one else could do, uh, pay the price for the sins that we had committed. And then one day, uh, out on Calvary's mountain, uh, Jesus Christ gave his life. Uh, they nailed him to the cross uh, and they pierced him in his side. Uh, but they, he never said anything until he told his brother. John to take care of his mother. Uh, and then he said to his father to receive his soul into the kingdom. And he laid his head in the lap of his shoulder and he died for us. He paid the price that we couldn't pay. Only blood could pay the price uh, for the sins that we have committed. And he paid it all on the cross. And then on Sunday morning, you showed us and you showed him that you appreciated everything that he had done. Uh, you raised him from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. We thank you, Father, for those that will stand today, that will preach your word. 
We ask, Lord, that you would give them the words that you would have them to speak and that you would strengthen them to say what you would have them to say. And, Father, that uh, you would open up our ears to hear and our hearts to receive and then know that heaven that will make a confession uh, to salvation. And, our uh, Father, we know that if we do the things that you told us to do, one of these old days uh, we're going to leave this earth. Life won't be with us anymore. We will be compelled to die. But, Father, we know that you will receive us into your kingdom, and we will be with you forevermore. We give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory that it all belongs to you. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to view that holy city, yeah, I'm going to view that holy city, one of these days, hallelujah, I'm going to view that holy city, I'm going to be there, one of these days, oh, I'm going to meet my Lord and Savior, Meet my Lord and Savior one of these. Hallelujah. I'm going to meet my Lord and Savior. I'm going to view that holy seed. I'm going to meet my Lord and Savior one of these days. Oh, I'm going to put on my long white robe. I'm going to put on my long white robe. One of these days, hallelujah, I'm going to put on my long white robe. I'm going to view that holy sea. I'm going to meet my Lord and Savior. I'm going to put on my long white robe. One of these days, oh, I'm going to sit at the welcome table. At the welcome table, one of these days, hallelujah. Gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna view that holy city. I'm gonna meet my Lord and Savior. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table, one of these days. Oh, I'm gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, I'm going to sing and never get tired one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing and never get tired. I'm going to do that holy sick. I'm going to meet my Lord and say, I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sing and never get tired. I'm going to sing and never get tired. I'm going to sing and never get tired. Bless the Lord, everybody. Good morning. These are your announcements for the week. Parents and teens, it's time to talk. Please join Pastor Biggs on a 30-minute teleconference tomorrow on Monday at 6.30 p.m. The phone number, not Zoom, is 302 202 one one zero eight again this is the phone number it's not on zoom 302-202-1108 the access code is one one eight zero five six given our current climate pastor biggs will release a state of saint stephen's address yes a state of saint stephen's address this will be in our church app on tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. The address is a coordinated effort of church and ministry leaders, and you will receive a hard copy also that will be included in our weekly mail-out. We're continuing to experience Christian growth this week. We're on Tuesday on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. We'll have the Faith Work Study. This again is Fasting to Break the Spirit of Poverty with Pastor Biggs. Then on Wednesday on Zoom, 
again at 10.30 a.m. is our Bible Power Hour. Zechariah chapters 11 and 12, facilitated by Deacon Patterson. At 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday is Chat with the Pastor, Open Conversations and Fellowship. Then at 6.30 p.m. we're having night school, which is our Sunday school lesson. Then at 7 o'clock p.m. is our Bible Happy Hour, a word for today with Deacon Griffin. For all Christian women, Christian women will be having a prayer call. This is for all members, especially the sick and all of us who are shut in. The Christian Women's Ministry wants to pray with you and for you. This will be on Thursday, April the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. The dial-in number is 302-202-1108, and the conference code is 222-344. On next Sunday, we'll have our 11 o'clock worship service, SSBC on YouTube, and then at 12 o'clock, we'll have our live prayer and fellowship on SSBC Zoom. YouTube address is YouTube slash user slash Reverend Biggs. And then Zoom is HTTPS slash slash Zoom dot US slash J six three five zero four seven zero six six. The meeting code is six three five zero four seven zero six six. We want to remind you that COVID test kits are available. Brother Hassani Edwards' company has FDA-approved test kits available for purchase by organizations and individuals at a cost of $75. So please help us get the word out to organizations, companies, medical groups, and individuals everywhere. Brother Hassani Edwards' contact information is 210-386-1. 004 again to 10386-1004 and his email address is Hassani at stabilitysurgical.com. These are your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. already done. It resonated in my spirit today. As I ask you now to join me at the altar for prayer. As you come, just think about that message from Psalms. But give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry. My King and my God. For to you I will pray. 
my voice you shall hear. It's already done, but we need to ask. We ask when we go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, your children, Father, are gathered around your altar with our heads bowed, our hearts open, touching one another in agreement that you are all by yourself are God, that you are all by yourself are almighty, that you are the King of kings. And the Lord of Lords, we gather to praise you, to worship you, and to say thank you. Father God, we just say thank you. Thank you for the opening of our eyes this morning. Thank you for safe travels, Father God. And Father God, we just thank you for each breath that we take. Because it wasn't promised to us. It wasn't owed to us. It was only given to us by your grace and mercy by the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, on the cross. So we say thank you. Father God, we just say thank you for this house that we are able to come to, to walk in comfortably, to sit and call your name, to worship you. Father, I ask you to watch over each and every family represented here. We ask you to watch over those who are sick and shut in. And a special blessing for those who are bereaved, Father God. Father, we know someone this morning is incarcerated. Someone has a troubled mind this morning, Father. Someone's concerned about finances. Somebody's lonely, Father God. Father God, somebody's concerned about a diagnosis that a doctor gave them. But, Father, let's be, let them be reminded that you are the caretaker of all needs, that you will sustain every need that anyone would ever have, Father God. Oh, we go to the doctors and we go to the hospitals, but you are the chief physician. Father God, we go to finance companies and we ask for loans, but you are the chief financial officer, Father God. We know that whatever, whatever our troubles may be, that you, you, Lord, and you alone, We'll take care of them. All we have to do, for you said all we have to do is ask. In your name, Father God, with faith, if we ask, it shall be given. So, Father God, we ask right now that we raise this whole country up to you, Father God. All the, all the distrust, all the corruption, all the stuff going on, all the terrible stuff going on, Father God, we just raise it up to you. We're not worried about a politician taking control because we know that you have control, Father God. We're not worried about people talking about us, Father God, because we know that you have it under control, Father God. So we just give this world to you, Father God. We give all our troubles to you as we're gathered around your altar right now, Father God. We just lay everything bare. We submit to you, Father God. We ask your spirit to rain down on each and every one of us, Father God, because you before we even stepped up here, know what each and every one of us needs, Father God. So touch everyone in the way that they need to be touched, Father God. Surrender the problems that everyone has, Father God. Take care of each and every one of us in the way that only you can, Father God. We just submit and give our lives to you, Father God. And have your way, have your way with each and every one of us, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we bind, Father God, illnesses. We bind troubled minds, Father God. We find anything that's not of your work, not of your deeds, Father God. We just call on you and say, Lord Jesus, have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our homes. Have your way. Father God, we just say, have your way with us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. We ask a special blessing upon our children, Father God. As they go back and forth to schools and travel these dangerous streets, Father God, watch over our children. Watch over them, Father God. Ask a special blessing for our pastor today, Father. Touch him, Father. Touch him. 
You know what he needs, Father God. Touch him to, to keep him strong, Father God, so that he may continue to lead us, continue to guide us, Father God. Bless him and his family. Bless the man that's going to break the bread of life today, Father God. Touch him now so that when he steps before us, that we see less of him and more of you. That his words, Father, his words that come forth, that you put in his mouth, that we hear them as you would have us hear them, Father God, and then we would do as you would have us to do. So, Father God, we just know that you control each and everything in this world. You control all things, Father God, so we just submit to you. But most of all, we say thank you. Thank you for looking out for us. Thank you for your grace and mercy, Father God. So just touch your children, Father God. Touch each and every one of us. And continue to watch over to bless us. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bless your name one more time. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to uh, dive into your word, Lord, and receive that which you have for us on this day. God, we simply ask you to bless your word. We thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet, God, and a light unto our pathway, that we may be able to walk in the direction you would have us to go in this day and age and in this hour. Oh, how we celebrate you, Lord, and we thank you. Bless your people, bless your hearers, Lord, bless your receivers. Prepare our hearts now, prepare our spirits to receive that which you have for us in this hour. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 6. Beginning at verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Our word is a powerful word today, and we won't be able to exhaust it. So we pray that you will bear with us as we uh, share it a series of ex sermonic expressions that will help us to be able to chew on the meat that Paul has shared with us in this text. Today we want to speak from the subject, winning an unfair fight. Winning an unfair fight. God is allowing the entire world to face the same predicament at the same time. Our current pandemic cares not about your financial status, cares not about your social status, cares not about your location or your nationality, nor does it care about any other identifier that distinguishes you from anyone else. Suffering and death is hitting everyone everywhere. In the U.S. alone, 706,000 cases plus have been identified. Over 37,000 deaths have already occurred, known deaths. Worldwide, 2,270,000 cases identified. 156,000 plus deaths already have occurred that are known associations. My brothers and my sisters, we're literally in a battle, a battle against an unseen opponent. But saints, don't you fret. Fret not, as believers in Christ Jesus, we're gonna be all right. As believers in Christ Jesus, we're actually in familiar territory. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. John 14, 16 says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be able, that he may abide with you forever. We don't see our helper, but we know his presence. Colossians 1, 15 says, who is Jesus? Talking about Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. What am I saying? I'm saying as a believer, we are familiar with the unseen. We are familiar with operating in the realm of invisibility. For in the spiritual realm, we're comfortable. In the, in the spiritual realm, we are in familiar territory. We, we know, we know that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
So, so we're not really looking for, we're not looking for someone or something to show up and knock on our door. Yes, we're operating in that which we are comfortable operating with. We don't have to see God to know God is real. That's why Psalms 27 and 1, which is on the cover of your mail outs this week, is so important to us. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? An African, an African proverb said, a blind person knows his environment more than a visitor with eyes. Yes, yes, the enemy may see us. And we may not see it, but we know the territory. So don't you worry. Where you are in the presence of God is right where you need to be. And so we need to understand that even though the fight looks unfair, because the enemy seems to be able to see us wherever we are, and we don't know where the enemy is, I want you to be confident today in knowing that we are in familiar territory and we may be blind to where the enemy is, but we know the territory. So be confident. The Africans say, don't worry. Everything is all right because we know the territory. How do we win this unfair fight? Winning, 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 first of all, requires that we keep our minds right. Don't, don't, don't let your minds wander too far on what you read and what you hear or what you even see. Don't, don't let your mind drift because of the things that people tell you. Everyone today, my brothers and sisters, has an opinion. Everyone seems to have a solution. Got you drinking this and eating that and taking this and taking that and buying this and buying that. But Paul says, be strong in the Lord. And that's where you need to hang your hat. You need to be strong in the Lord. I, I like the way uh, uh, the scholar Ellicott uh, dissected this particular se segment. He points out that this be strong in the Lord implies that your strength comes from within. Be strong from that which is already in you. You don't need to look outward for your solution. Your solution is in you. Similar to what Acts 922 says about Saul. They were attacking him. They were challenging him. But, but, the, but, but the word of God says in Acts 922 that Saul increased the more. The more they came at him, the more uh, bolder he got, the stronger he got under the power and the operation of God. 2 Timothy 2, 2 and 1 says, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, as long as we are in God, we are all right. As long as we are operating in the spirit of God, we are all right. As long as God is covering you, we are all right. The text goes on to say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We know that this strength is an inner strength that comes from that which is working in us. It's not something that we, amen, own but it's something that we possess, that being the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this, 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 this part of this illustration that says, uh, in the power of his might, moves it from a passive presence to an active strength. To be strong in the Lord is not to know that you can do it. To be strong in the Lord is not to think that you can do it. To be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might says that you do it in spite of what it looks like. So stand, my brothers and my sisters, today. Stand on the knowledge that God is working in you. Stand on the knowledge that God is present in you. You don't need to see him, but, but you know that he's there. And you need to stop just thinking that he's there. And we need to start walking like he's with us. We need to start talking like he's with us. We need to start standing like he's with us. Don't get this confused. I'm not talking about uh, uh, foolish things like challenging uh, uh, someone's faith by what they do or do not do. 
Do you drive a car? Do you stay at home? Do you wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you being able to close your eyes at night because you know if you wake up in the morning, it's because God has brought you through the night. And if you don't wake up in the morning, it's because God has brought you home during the night. But you can sleep at night not worrying about what's going to happen to you and yours. You can be confident in knowing that God will take care of you. Some of us are so worried we have so much toilet paper and everything else that, that we're losing our minds. We're becoming hermits and hoarders. And we don't have to become hermits and hoarders. We can get some stuff, but you ought to get it to share it. Don't hold on to it. Somebody else needs it. Be there for one another. That, that, that's what faith is. Faith is walking in the love of God. Faith is walking like Jesus walked. Faith is taking care of yourself, but ensuring that others are taken care of as well. I don't have to go in and sit down with my neighbor to help my neighbor. I can do a drive-by and drop you off what I may have some extra of. And I know I'm right about it. I, I, I can do a phone call and pray with you. I may not be able to show up in your hospital room, but surely I can reach out to you and offer a word of prayer. Winning requires that we get our minds right. Amen. Winning also requires that we dress for success. This, this, this text tells us that, that we ought not uh, dress like we're doing now, just enough to look good on the camera. No, 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 no. We need to dress from head to toe. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God. The prime application of this statement is that you already possess what you need. You can't put on what you don't have. Amen. All these Bible studies that you've been to, all these worship service, services that you've been to, all these songs that you've seen over your life, all these prayers that you pray over your life, all of these functions that you've been to with the church, you need to know that God has already put his word in you. And you have what you need. And not only do you have what you need, but you know how to wear it. Oh, God wouldn't tell you to put on the whole armor if you didn't know how to wear the armor. They thank God for good, solid, biblical training. They thank God for training up a child in the way that he, go, that he should go so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Because now is the time to put on the whole arm that we may be able to withstand. So, so, so the prime application is that you possess what you need and that you know how to wear what you have. And thirdly, what you have is designed just for you. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Lord. You don't have to worry about your armor, amen, that God gives you uh, not fitting right. Your armor is designed for you. God knows exactly how much you need of each ingredient, of each piece of the armor. And next week we're going to address the armor. But God knows right now, and he knew before the world was, how much armor you would need, amen, for your situation. Thank God for armor that fits me well. David struggled trying to wear the king's armor. But my brothers and my sisters, we have no struggle, amen, walking in God's armor. Because what fits you is for you. But what God has for me, it's for me. And I thank God for the right kind of armor. Amen. The scripture says that you may be able to stand. Stand uh, with the right spiritual equipment. I have the whole armor. Stand against a spiritual opponent. We know who the enemy is. This text says that he is the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what we're doing is spiritual warfare. For we wrestle not, amen, against flesh and blood. You need to get that, y'all. It's not about who is where or who has what title or what position or who's talking on television or who's on Facebook or who's making 
and all the focus. It doesn't matter about that because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we also are able to stand uh, because of the spiritual covering. Because we don't have on just any armor. We didn't order this on Amazon. We didn't do the Walmart drive through for this armor. We didn't even go to the costume place to get this armor. This text says, put on the whole armor of God. That means God purchased and God presented. God provided, hallelujah, and God protected. We can stand because we are able to dress for success. Putting on the whole armor of God in a day like today feels so good. The armor is not too hot. The armor is not too heavy. Hallelujah, somebody. The armor is just right for each one of his children. I know you may not be able to walk like you used to walk. I know you may not be able to sing like you used to sing. I know you may not be able to go like you used to go. But put on the whole armor of God because we're winning this unfair fight. It looks bad from their perspective, but we're comfortable from our perspective. Why? Because we, amen, have our minds right. And secondly, we are dressed for success. And finally, my brothers and my sisters, winning requires that we maintain high expectations. Amen. Don't shoot too low. Aim for the spiritual stars. Come on, somebody. The text says stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you saying? Stand. The armor of God enables you to both withstand and to stand. You can handle what the devil is throwing at you. You can handle what the doctor is diagnosing. You can handle what the government is telling you to do. You can handle the job saying we got to adjust. You can handle this because you have the whole armor of God. So we stand not just in any kind of way, but we stand victoriously. We stand with a victorious mindset. We stand with a victorious spirit. We stand with a victorious attitude. We stand with a victorious outlook, my brothers and my sisters. When this is all over and, and we are uh, reunited again in the flesh, amen, I want you to know that you won't be a spiritual cripple. You'll be whole because the whole armor has protected all of the spiritual you. You won't be spiritually broken because the whole armor has protected all of you. Yeah, God will take care of you. This is our faith at work, my brothers and sisters. Hold fast to your faith. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. The same God that took care of David is the same God that will take care of you. The same God that took care of our forefathers is the same God that's taking care of us today. God will take care of you. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to the Lamb of God, the one who hung, bled, and died on Calvary, paved the way unto eternal salvation, gave access to this whole armor, by giving up his life. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in his feet. They pierced him in the side to verify his death because his death came too soon according to their standards. Hallelujah. But they didn't take his life. He gave his life. And just like he gave it, on the third day as he had predicted, he took it up again. Early on Sunday morning, he rose with all power, all power in his hand. And he's now making intercession for you and I on the right hand of the Father. But he said, I must go that your comforter can come. I must go so your helper can come. Hallelujah. He left in the flesh, but he stayed in the spirit. Come on, somebody. 
So the Holy Spirit is with us right now. He revealed himself on the day of Pentecost in a most powerful way. Changed the way we talk. Changed the way we walk. Changed the way we worship. Changed the way we live. Changed the way we love. Changed the way we learn. Changed the way we lead. Changed the way we look at things. Because the Spirit showed up. And he's been ever present with us ever since. And he's present right now. And he's reaching out to those that may have not accepted Christ right now as the sacrificial access to salvation. The blood that was shed for your sins and my sins. Accept Jesus now as your Lord and Savior. And watch God change things in your life right now. You're struggling with what's real and what's not. We know what's real. In this unfair fight, we're not worried. We're not afraid. We're confident. If you have accepted Christ today, we love you. And we applaud you. Let us know. Reach out to us by phone, by email, through our products. Reach out to us and let us know that you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that God spoke to you today about this unfair fight and how you too are now a winner in Christ Jesus. For believers, I encourage you to keep on keeping on. God didn't bring you this far to leave and he's never left you, never failed you, and he never will. So you just hold on. Don't let go. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. We thank you today for worshiping with us. We pray that something has been said and done that will make a difference in your life on today, on tomorrow, until Jesus comes back. Until that time, let us continue working together, walking together, loving together, leaning and depending on God together, walking in His Spirit. Let your spiritual life Blossom right now. What a great opportunity to let the spiritual man and the spiritual woman come to the forefront of who you are. Join us over on our Zoom channel. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. We love you. We know that God is working. We also know that we have an opportunity to continue serving him on this side, even right now. So we're going to have altar prayer in a few minutes, and then after that, we're going to have a little fellowship. Just laugh and smile with one another. Doesn't take long, but come on, join us. We love you. We love you so much. May the Lord bless you in a powerful and wonderful way. God, we thank you today for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your truth, your power, and your presence. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your faith, every one of us perfect in a spiritual way. Father, bless your children. It's only your care. Keep us forever in your care. May your grace, may your mercy, and may your truth rest rule and abide with us now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God bless you.